Is this the end for the city ground as we know it? Has the redevelopment been stopped completely? And are Forest really going to go and play their football somewhere else? Welcome to your Forest News. Good morning, good evening, or good night. I hope you guys are doing well, and welcome to your latest Forest News. Coming up in today's video, we'll talk you through all the ins and outs, the red tape, everything that's being discussed about the city ground, and Forest potentially moving away from it. If you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And if you want to check us out, we're now on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere else with all our podcasts. So if you want to catch up on Grumpy Old Reds or any of the daily news, make sure that you go in and following us. And if you could leave a five star review, you'd be the best. On top of that, with the city ground going, potentially, potentially, you may want to grab your city ground model that you can build up from FOCO. And if you use code FFTV10, you'll get 10% off at the checkout. Honestly, it's one of the one of the most satisfying models to put together if you have the patience for it. Thank you again to FOCO for giving you guys 10% off. Okay, let's jump into this. And this, this is going to be messy. There's a lot of emotions flying around on this topic. But let's kind of rewind and talk about everything because we've been thinking about doing this update over the last two to three weeks. But knowing there's going to be new information coming out throughout the whole time, thought it's better to kind of wrap it up in one package. So this has been going on for a while. We know there's been the rowing club issue before. We know the club have, in a way, should we say, bent the truth about why they were delaying the Peter Taylor stand. Um, there's been talks about councils and leaseholds and everything else. We're going to try and unpack it all for you, okay? But in the comments below, let me know, is it an absolute red line for you that cannot be crossed that Forest should leave or sh could leave the city grounds? With all the history, with all the heritage, where do you feel? Or do you guys maybe think... If we can start from scratch, we can get good facilities in the ground. We can, um, you know, expand it on a cheaper scale. It'll be financially sensible to do it. What do you guys know? Whatever your feelings are, you are welcome and free to put down, as always, what you're thinking in the comments. Okay, so I want to talk you through a couple of things. I think if we start with the Athletic article from a couple of weeks ago, or it might have been last week, let's, let's unpick this all. So it starts with the leasehold. So basically, Forest are currently paying 250k a year to the council to um, basically rent out the land that is the city ground. The council now wants to quadruple this to a million pounds a year. And Forrest is saying, that, whoa, whoa, that's way, way too much. And the council, are in the back of their minds, what they have is the idea of knocking down the city ground and then redeveloping it into residential homes. A bit like what you've seen with the old school Highbury for Arsenal and how that got turned into uh, housing developments. And then they moved into the Emirates. Now, a couple of quotes I want to read out to you. Um, Forest preferred, uh, it's not Forest preferred option to do this. Forrest would rather redevelop the ground and bring in a new capacity. So um, we've got some quotes here from Tom Cartledge. I don't think there's ever been a project in this city across all its assets where somebody's prepared to put in between 100 and 200 million as the owner is, as in Maranakis, for both the Peter Taylor stand and the Bridgeford stand, says Cartledge. It will create a huge number of jobs. Hotel rooms will be full. Restaurants will be full. The benefits of the city are huge. And I do tend to agree with that. In terms of the kind of plans for the ground itself, what Forrest is looking to do is basically knock down the Peter Taylor stand, uh, put it up with almost a two or three tiered replacement, and also increase the capacity in the Bridgeford end as well. We all know about the shipping containers and things like that. So that's one thing. Now, what's come out yesterday is there's been a bit of lockerheads when it comes to this 250k versus a million pounds. So I'll just read you the quote from the article from the BBC, and there's quite a few things that need to be broken down here. So the city ground is the city ground is cited on land leased from the city council. There's only 33 years left on the current deal. 
talks about an extension of stores over the authorities' demand of a million pounds, as we've just said, and the council remains committed to further negotiations to find the best way forward. Um, Cartledge has said there's been significant, if there isn't significant process, Forrest will have to look elsewhere. Uh, there's also been discussions about the club about buying the freehold on a permanent basis, which we'll explain in a second. And we find ourselves, he says, in a position where for the first time we're having to consider whether the future is going to be away from the city ground. In the future, football clubs' wages are going to be very heavily linked to revenue. We'll touch on that as well. If we can't grow the revenue, then there's a realistic chance we can't achieve our objectives and grow the playing side and give the manager the resources he needs. Unless we start to see some significant progress, it is now being uh, it is now having to be a realistic discussion point to look somewhere else. I'm frustrated, he carries on to say. The owner is frustrated because what he wants to do is give back to what he promised the people of Nottingham Forest, which is growth on and off the field, and not to be able to do that is tough. So let's unpack that bit first. There's a couple of key points we need to explain. So I'm sure a lot of you understand how leasehold works. If you don't, very quickly, I guess the quickest example I can give you is if you're buying a, a flat. So normally if you bought a house, you then own the land that that house is registered on. You register it with the land registry and it is yours. If you are buying um, a flat in a block of flats, then you don't have the leasehold to that land. You own that area as in the flat and that leasehold gets renewed usually on houses it's like 125 years but once it gets down to like 80 years then that becomes no longer mortgageable and the price diminishes on your flat because it can't be remortgaged similar to this so although 33 years sounds like a long way away it's not it's really short what's left on the lease and Forrest have to negotiate this now. This is, in fact, it probably should have been negotiated a long time ago. So that's problem number one. The second problem is Forrest can't get going on any stadium development without knowing that that lease is going to be there for a good significant portion of time. Let's not forget, we've been there since, what, the 3rd of September, 1898, which, fun fact, is the same day Ant was born. So you can tell we've been there for a very, very long time. And there has been developments, there have been opportunities in the past for Forrest to buy the land, the ground, etc. It just hasn't been taken. That's a whole other video in itself. Now, how do I feel about what Forrest's stance is? To me, it's a couple of clear things. One, what Tom said there about the revenue linking in to the player finances is extremely true. As we told you many weeks ago, the whole PSR, FFP stuff is going to be changed. And it's going to be linked into more the European model, as in UEFA, where 70 or so percent, maybe even as high as 90 percent of your revenue can then be used on player wages and income. So clubs will now need to generate income to be self-sufficient. So if you are able to sell 10,000 more tickets, <coughs> excuse me, on a match day, then that will generate more income, which then they can pump back into players' wages, etc., and things like that. So uh, clubs with a smaller stadium, if you look at, and no disrespect, well, I usually do have disrespect for them, Luton and Bournemouth, if they were to carry on, they've got what, between 10 and 12,000. It doesn't really matter how many fans they do or don't have. If they're only getting that limited gate receipts, that's going to shrink their revenue from one point of call. And what you're probably going to see is clubs like that are going to have to like double up their season ticket prices just to try and compete with clubs that are just at 20,000, for example. So what he says there is completely true. And I've, and we've told you about it many weeks ago about that potentially happening. Now, the next thing to consider is, are we really going to leave the city ground? And this is just jostling. For me, this is, I think, is quite smart by Forrest. They know there'll be a huge outcry from the fan base if there's any whiff of us moving away from the city ground. And what it does is two things. One, it will put public pressure on the council to lower their demands. And secondly, it buys them time. And I think this is the thing that everyone's missing. If, if suddenly in a couple of weeks time it comes out that due to public pressure, thank you for your support, we've been able now to sit down and start renegotiating with the council. What I think is a hidden agenda, if you like, 
is that the powers that be at Forest want to push this and kick this decision to the end of the season where we know if we're relegated or if we're still in the Premier League. Now, Tom himself says he is very confident we will still be in the Premier League. He didn't want to talk about the uh, PSR charges, but that was his statement on it. And the, uh, you know, the contradiction to that is that they've said that irrespective of what division we are, they still want to kick on and go ahead and develop the stadium or ground. Sorry, Nathan. So there's a lot of hidden things going on here. Now, that bit about kicking it to the end of the season, that's just my opinion. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree with it. But I think what will happen is that they will come to an agreement with the council. It will be probably more so towards the end of the season. And then they can take their time about announcing little bits of development here and there. We've even seen with like the shipping containers that were meant to be in there months ago. Where are they? They're still not there. We saw the floodlights coming down and nothing much has changed since then. So there's a lot of kicking the can down the road. But the real question is, how do I feel about it all? Do, you, do I want to lose the history of the city ground? The ground where I started watching football in as a kid, where many of my heroes were there. Some great nights. Some depressing nights as well, I'm not going to lie. But it's got that link to you, hasn't it? It's hard to ever move. It's like leaving a house that you grew up in for years since birth or whatever, and then having to move and maybe someone knocking it down or whatever. It's, it's all painful. So there's that emotional link to it. Now, I feel the reaction from the fan base has been way too much this way to, you know, overboard and way too much the other way. I think it needs a sensible middle ground approach. What do I mean by that? The reactionary side of it is over my dead, dead body, I'm going to chain myself to the gate. You aren't taking away our city ground. That's way too far the other way. And the other way is knock it down. Let's get a new stadium. Let's make it 50, 60,000. We'll fill it in week in, week out. I think we still need more information. And the more information we get, the more kind of better um, objectional decisions we can decide as a fan base. So my gut feeling is... The city ground will stay. I want it to stay. But let's not kid ourselves. It needs a lot of work, man. Just even the facilities, the hot water. Man, there's still some piss stains that I've seen in the toilets that were there from back in 2001, man. It's just like it needs some definite TLC in and around the ground. So I'm going to stay calm on this one. But I'm going to leave the comments open for you guys to react how you feel about it. Do you think it will go? Do you want it to go? And if you do want it to go, what do you think is going to happen? A couple of examples of stadiums where they've done it. You've seen Spurs, the most recent one. Everton are currently doing it. They all had historical stadiums that have moved to different locations. It'll be interesting to see how their fans feel about it. And at the moment, you've got the whole story about the Wembley of the North when it comes to Manchester United, as they are considering moving locations as well. So we are not alone in this whole debate when it comes to a fan base. There are many other clubs having the same emotional, emotional thoughts about it. But let me know how you guys feel about it all. If you enjoyed the video, hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully it's explained some of it. There isn't too much more to, to break to you. It's not like I can sit here and say, yeah, come the 15th of August, you know, the bulldozer's coming in. Nothing like that's developed. This is all, I think just jockeying from Forest into a position where they can put pressure onto the council. I do have the solution for all of this, though. Let's get Rob onto the council. Let's vote for Rob. Get him in there. True Forest fan. He can go in there, and we know he'll do the best thing for the city ground there. Get your thoughts in on all of that below. If you've enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And we'll see you shortly for a preview to the Liverpool match. We've got the Predictor League coming up and Grumpy Old Reds at 8 o'clock tonight. It's going to be a busy day. We'll catch you then. Come on, you Reds.